Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to be starting off part 5 of our discrete math series and in part 5 we're going to be learning how to count. Now I know you're saying well I already know how to count but we're going to be learning how to count in a different way um, in a little bit more complicated way that's going to be very helpful uh, for those of you taking discrete math and it's actually very helpful for those of you not taking discrete math uh, learning how to count the events around you. So in this first video we're going to start talking about some terminology events and experiments. So an experiment we define as any activity with a well-defined observable outcomes or results. Now remember when we say well-defined it means that uh, we know exactly what those possible outcomes or results are and it's never going to be ambiguous, right? Uh, we, it's always going to be exactly one of the outcomes or results that we expect and it's always observable. So you can never have nothing happen um, unless nothing is one of the outcomes or results that we expect from the activity. So for example, a coin flip has two outcomes, heads or tails, and we usually write H or T. So a coin flip is just a very basic example of an experiment, and it's one that we'll use um, pretty frequently uh, in example problems because it's so easy to talk about. Now the different possible outcomes of an experiment are called sample points, and the set of all possible outcomes is the sample space. So for a coin flip, the sample points are just H or T, and the set of all possible outcomes would be the set HT. And an event is a subset of a sample space. So for an event, let's have a little example to talk about an event. So for example, Betty and John roll a die. Oh, there's supposed to be a little space there. Betty and John roll a die. If the die shows one or two, John wins. So what is the event that John wins? Well, the event that John wins is going to be the set 1, 2. Pretty basic, right? So the sample space here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2 is a subset of the sample space, and this subset of the sample space represents the event in which John wins this dice game, this very basic dice game between him and Betty. Now since events are sets, we can use set theory to describe them. So for example, what is the event either John wins or the roll is odd. Well the event that John wins we just found to be 1, 2, and the event that the roll is odd is 1, 3, 5. So these are sets, so if we want to talk about the event that either one set or the other set we know that that's just the union, isn't it? If an element's either here or it's here, that's the union of these two sets. So the event that either John wins or the roll is odd is going to be the union, which is 1, 2, 3, 5. Again, fairly intuitive, but this gives us an idea of what we mean when we use all of this terminology in practice. Um, I'm going to take this all away. I'm just going to do a little bit more terminology before we move on uh, to the next video. Okay. Now, if A is an event, then A complement is the event where A does not happen. So if if you remember all of our set theory, this first statement should make perfect sense. If this doesn't make sense to you, review what A complement means and then take that in the context of A being an event. Now of course here A complement is going to mean the complement of A in our universe and our universe is going to be the sample space, right? So in the previous example where John wins, 1, 2 complement is going to be the complement in our sample space, so that's going to be 3, 4, 5, 6. So this A complement here is the event in which John does not win. All right? Now let S be a sample space with U and V events in S. So we call the event S certain. Now this makes sense. In our example with rolling a die, the event S is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? If we roll a die, we're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. One of these is going to show up on the die. So the event S, the entire sample space as an event, is certain. It means one of these must happen when the experiment takes place. Now we call the event the empty set impossible. Right? The empty set is a subset of S, but we call it impossible because if we roll a dice, right, if the experiment takes place, then one of these numbers is going to be realized by the roll of the dice. There's going to be one of these number of pips showing up on the top of the die after it's rolled. 
So in no case, when we roll a die, can we have none of those numbers show up on the top of the die, right? So the empty set, although it is a subset of the sample space, it's an impossible as an event. Now, if U intersection V, remember U and V are just events in S, if U intersection V equals the empty set, we call U and V mutually exclusive, right? What mutually exclusive means is that if one of them happens, the other one cannot happen. So if U happens, then V cannot happen. And that's exactly what this means, doesn't it? If the intersection of the two events is empty, that means that if one of the events occurs, then the sample point lies in that event, which means that the sample point does not lie in the other event. So the other event could not possibly have occurred. So for example, let's look at the event that I uh, roll an odd number on a die intersected with the event that I roll an even number on the die. Oops, this is two, four, six. And this, of course, is the empty set. Now, this makes sense because if I roll a die once, that's my experiment as a single roll of the die, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, or six, only one number. And of course, if it's odd, it's not going to be even. So the event that I get an odd number and an even number is empty, which means that if I roll an odd number, I didn't also roll an even number. A very basic example, but this is the idea of mutually exclusive, right? Now that's the end of this introductory video. In the next video, we're going to talk about the multiplication principle when we have multiple events that we do um, side by side. We'll see you there.